where do we start? Because <laughs> do we just stop eating tuna fish and we're done? Mm-hmm. And well, do we no, like- I mean, I, I, yeah. So I, I, I'm on the board of a group called the Environmental Working Group, which is a really yep. amazing organization that is research driven, data driven organization that uh, uses existing databases and other resources to identify where we're getting our exposures to all sorts of environmental toxins and uh, and they provide practical consumer guides for what to buy and what not to buy so whether it's your household cleaning products or your skincare products or your sunblock or what food you're eating what vegetables you're eating what meat you're eating what fish you're eating it basically provides really in-depth consumer guides on how to reduce and avoid most of these toxins. So I, I find that really great. They have the Dirty Dozen, for example, which is the 12 most contaminated fruits and vegetables with pesticides and chemicals, and the Clean 15, which is the least contaminated. So you should probably never eat a nectarine or a strawberry if it's not organic, but you probably eat a banana or an avocado, right? So it's just like that. And things you might not think are bad, like celery. Celery is terrible. So, you know, I think we really have to be very aware of, I mean, people are, for example, juicing non-organic celery. It can be oh. a harmful problem. Yeah. I, I, so I think, I think we, we, we can use those guys to really help us to reduce our overall exposures um, in our homes and in our environment. Um, and we can also learn how to upregulate our own detoxification systems and and do that in a way that's that's just sort of on a daily sustained basis, which I do because I, you know, I've, I've had you know mercury poisoning. I have a very uh, sluggish detox system. I don't upregulate my glutathione, which is so important for detoxification. I have methylation problems, so I'm very proactive about um, personalizing my own detoxification biochemistry. And we we can do that through some simple dietary in, in, inputs and uh, supplements. Mark, you just hit on something that I think is really critical and sort of the foundation of all functional medicine, which is mm. that you need to know your data. Test, don't guess, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so you yeah. you just referred to essentially some simple genetic testing and some simple evaluations that just really can give yeah. you great insight into, yeah. oh, yeah. You're like we're loyal to our toxins because of our genetics, but yeah. we can get rid of it. So, yes, yes, absolutely. I think that's that's important. Now, there are general principles that apply to everybody, and there's general uh, approaches to detoxification, which is reduce your exposures. You know, include foods that upregulate detoxification. Drink plenty of water. Have regular bowel movements. Try to get saunas in. Really simple things that I think are universal. But then there's, for example, for me, I need to make sure that I, I, I upregulate my glutathione. I take in acetylcysteine. I take lipoic acid. I make sure I have selenium, and I have make sure. That I'm eating cruciferous vegetables every day, that I have garlic and onions, that I that I'm very aware of this. And also take methylating support and I take the right supplements. And so I think everybody is a little bit different, but but uh, there are some basic principles that work for everybody. Yeah, it's like the common theme that runs through humanity. You know, mm-hmm. We we all need D. Yeah, well, I mean, but the thing you're highlighting is we all are different. We all do need we have similarities and we all have differences and yeah knowledge and knowledge is power so getting totally. to understand what what's right for you is definitely not going to be the same that's right for your neighbor or anybody else it's really important to keep that going totally so we have the bucket of reduce your exposures we have the bucket of learn your individual needs by working with a functional medicine provider obviously mm-hmm. Pick, mm-hmm. big plug for functional medicine but um uh, when people start to clean things up what do they notice like what can they experience at, at not just pulling off the toxins, but really pulling out the toxins? Well, it's different, it's different depending on the person. So, you know, I always say if, uh, if you don't have a headache, an aspirin doesn't do much, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I think if you're sick, like I was, and you get rid of the heavy metals, from mercury, then you will notice a big difference over time. Uh, right. And for me, it went from basically being... Um, one step away from being on disability for the rest of my life to being recovered and highly functional and doing whatever I want. And that that's a very, I mean, I, I, I was riding my bike a hundred miles a day and literally the next day I couldn't walk up the stairs. Like something just shifted in my system and the heavy, it was, you know, there's a philosophy of sort of this, this sort of overload syndrome. So your body can handle a certain amount until it, it can't. And then Yep. You know, you fill up that you fill up a glass until it overflows. And so the same thing with your body and toxins, 
your body's able to sort of manage it. And then boom, all of a sudden it can't depending on you. And so uh, some people who are symptomatic from problems with environmental toxins will have huge improvements in their health. I mean, whether it's, I can just go through the list of patients in my head, whether it's reversing Alzheimer's, autism, eczema, um, chronic colitis, autoimmune diseases, uh, just, just tremendous depression, <laughs> you name it. Uh, when you start to work on people's detoxification and, and if they have high levels of these co compounds in their body, they do see a big, big difference. Yeah, I want to highlight because we in this summit, we talk all about where the problems are and we want to really make sure to really concentrate on there. There is hope that people yeah. can get better. <laughs> And there's a lot to do. You're not stuck Look at me. being sick. I'm better. There you go. <laughs> I, I I was so sick I couldn't I couldn't I could literally not even read my daughter who was a little kid a story out loud and understand it. I had read I could read it out loud, but I wouldn't be able to kind of digest what it meant. And it was that's how bad my brain was to having written you know 18 books since then. Mm -hmm.